In Philadelphia, Clyde Shelton resides with his wife and daughter. Clyde is passionate about machines and spends most of his time assembling and disassembling them. He is fond of his daughter, so he is grateful when the daughter makes him a bracelet. Suddenly, he hears his wife asking him to answer the door. As soon as he does, two thugs, Clarence Darby and his accomplice Rupert, force their way in. Darby beats up Clyde with a bat before tying his hands behind his back and asking Rupert to steal anything he can. Clyde can only watch as Darby violently molests his wife and kills her. Clyde's daughter comes into the room and has to suffer the same fate as her mother. While carrying out these heinous acts, Darby repeatedly says that one cannot escape fate. Nick Rice prosecutes Clyde's case. He shares with his boss, Cantrell, that the judge had dismissed the DNA evidence, leaving him vulnerable. However, Darby has agreed to testify against Rupert. This will give Rupert the death penalty while Darby pleads guilty to third-degree murder. Nick meets with Clyde to update him on the case. Clyde has some notes to help with the prosecution, but Nick puts those aside. He then asks Clyde to trust him as he knows how the law works. Nick reveals a deal to Clyde, and Clyde refuses to take it. However, Nick confesses that he has already taken the deal. Clyde is devastated. He wants to go to court and plead his case before a jury, but Nick cannot risk having the two men walk away. Nick dissuades Clyde, but when Clyde insists on a trial, Nick gets aggressive, saying that the facts don't matter unless you have the evidence to back them up. Clyde had passed out during the incident, so his testimony couldn't be relied upon. Rupert is sentenced to death a few days later, while Darby signs the plea agreement. Outside the courthouse, Darby approaches Nick and shakes his hands, thanking him for being in his corner and letting justice prevail. Nick turns around and sees that Clyde has witnessed the handshake. Nick goes home to his pregnant wife, promising to be there every day of the baby's life. Ten years later, Nick is one of the best attorneys in the district. That morning, he is reminded to attend his daughter's talent show at school, but he cannot make it as he has an appointment. It turns out that his appointment is in prison for Rupert's execution. Before his death, Rupert once more claims that he never committed those heinous acts that Darby accused him of. His words cause Nick and his co-worker Sarah to shift uncomfortably in their seats. The lethal injections are administered, but Rupert dies a horrible death instead of passing away peacefully. Nick and his people investigate the chemicals and find one with the inscription that Darby was fond of. The police deduce that Darby had tampered with the chemical. Elsewhere, Darby is sniffing some drugs when he receives a call from a mysterious caller using an electronic voice changer program. The stranger advises him to leave his apartment as the police are about to arrest him. Darby quickly exits the room and follows the path the stranger outlines for him just as the police surround his building. Luckily, Darby finds a cop car and an officer sleeping inside. He steals the officer's gun, wakes the guy, and has him walk a few meters away. The officer removes his hat to reveal himself as Clyde. Darby goes to shoot him, but instead pierces himself with the gun. Clyde had set the gun to inject Darby's hand with tetrodotoxin, a paralyzing agent. Clyde takes Darby to a warehouse, where he torments him for hours. Eventually, the police find Darby's body, dismembered into 20 pieces. Outright, Nick suspects that Clyde is the only man who could be responsible for this. Several police officers are dispatched to Clyde's location. He willingly surrenders to the police as if he was waiting for them. Clyde is naked, save for the bracelet his daughter had made for him. At Clyde's house, Nick finds many law books alongside a newspaper clipping of his and Darby's handshake. The police have no evidence to detain Clyde, so they can only hope for a confession. Meanwhile, Nick's daughter gets a package that she assumes to be from her recital. She plays it, only to find it's a recording of Clyde dismembering Darby. Clyde had worn a mask so that he couldn't be identified. Nick interrogates Clyde, saying he did the right thing by getting rid of Darby. When asked if he killed Darby and Rupert, Clyde says he wanted them both dead in his mind. Nick takes this as a confession, but Clyde points out that he never directly confessed to killing the two men. Nick claims that he knows that Clyde committed the murders, but Clyde reminds him that he had once told him that it wasn't what a person knew, but what could be proved. In front of a jury, Clyde could argue that someone was trying to frame him or that a rival had killed Darby as he was an addict. Clyde says that he will confess if Nick can get him a nice bed. Nick denies the request, but as soon as he leaves, he finds out about the video. His boss asks Nick to put his ego aside and make the deal. 
Nick gets Clyde his bed and learns that Clyde had received some payments from the Department of Defense. In court, Clyde requests bail, claiming to be a law-abiding citizen and that the prosecution lacks evidence to keep him detained. The judge grants Clyde bail, but instead Clyde applauds the judge. He scolds her for letting him go after saying some fancy words and feels that the judge has no sense of right or wrong, so she lets murderers and criminals go. Clyde is held in contempt and meets with Nick again. Clyde claims to be insane, but admits that he was on the video killing Darby. Clyde wants a steak for lunch and an iPod at precisely 1 o'clock in exchange for Bill, Darby's lawyer's life. Bill was reported missing a few days ago, so Nick hurries to deliver as promised. However, the warden adds extra security, causing the meal to be delayed by 8 minutes. Clyde gives Nick the coordinates to find Bill, but they are too late. Bill had been buried alive with time-mechanized materials and suffocated. If Nick had gotten the food in time, they might have saved Bill. In the cell, Clyde uses the T-bone steak to kill his roommate and is thrown in solitary confinement. Nick wonders why Clyde killed his roommate. Nick gives Clyde his daughter's bracelet, asking him if his wife and kid would approve of his actions. Clyde takes the bracelet and remarks that his family cannot feel anything as they are dead. Nick and his colleague Dunnigan meet with a CIA officer who informs them that Clyde could kill anyone without even being in the room. If he's arrested, he wants to be there and warns them that if Clyde wants someone dead, they are dead. He tells them that the only way to stop Clyde from going after all the people involved in his family's case is to kill him. Nick and Dunnigan meet with the judge, asking to help with Clyde's case. The judge receives a phone call and when she answers it, the phone explodes, killing her instantly. Nick confronts Clyde, wondering when his vengeance will end. Clyde claims that this isn't about vengeance and asks Nick to find the lesson before it's too late. He wants all charges against him dropped or else he will kill everyone. Nick transfers his team to work in the prison until Clyde's deadline elapses. However, all the cars explode in the parking lot and Nick can only watch as a petrified Sarah waits for her doom. The investigation shows that Clyde could have killed more people if he wanted to. Nick assumes that Clyde has an accomplice. Nick takes his family to safety. He finds a framed picture of his handshake and realizes someone has been at his house. A furious Nick beats up Clyde, but he maintains that Nick finds the reason for his madness. Clyde says that if Nick had taken the case to trial, Clyde would have lived with the decision no matter what. However, Nick's refusal to try is the reason he is back. He promises that the subsequent events will be biblical. When returning home from a funeral, a weaponized disposal robot guns down Cantrell's car and Cantrell is killed. The mayor is furious about the killings and appoints Nick as district attorney to deal with this. She also puts the town in lockdown. Nick's investigations lead him to Clyde's auto garage. He tracks it down, surprised to see tunnels leading everywhere, including to the prison. This is why Clyde killed his roommate, as he wanted to be put in solitary confinement and sneak out to do his bidding. Further evidence points out that Clyde's next target is the City Hall, where the mayor will hold an emergency meeting. Clyde disguises himself as a janitor and sets up a bomb. Nick and the others find the bomb and realize that it could go off at any second since it's to be activated by phone. Clyde returns to his solitary confinement cell to find Nick waiting for him. Nick has now understood the whole reason Clyde has been terrorizing the city. Nick begs Clyde to rethink his decision, but he refuses. Clyde wants to make a deal to save the mayor and her people, but Nick points out that the lesson is that one should not make a deal with murderers. Clyde makes the incriminating call just as Nick leaves. He hears the familiar sound, realizing Nick has left the bomb in his cell. Clyde holds his daughter's bracelet and smiles as the room explodes. Nick is seen attending his daughter's recital a while later, showing that he now values his family. Do leave a comment telling us your favorite part of the movie. Hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next recap. Until next time, folks, take care and goodbye.